Hi everyone, welcome to this eSign training session. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to be taking you through how to use this awesome enhancement. Just a couple of things to note first. eSign, what it is, it helps you get your final approval faster, of course, because it allows you to have built-in digital signatures that you can send to your clients so that they can find their docs on the go. Benefits, of course, get your deal done faster. Um, you can collect them documents signed more easily than ever before as they don't need to use a printer or scanner or anything to get these signed back to you and they can do them on the go on any device. Um, docs are automatically loaded back into your application as well so helping you skip steps with that save download upload and um, then on the client's end also it's easier for them because they get their deal done faster meaning they get their funding faster, they don't need a printer or scanner and um, it's totally secure. All right, without further ado, I'm gonna jump right in. So I'm in a deal in my conditions and documents section. This is where we action out eSign from. So first I need to have the PDF of the document I want signed. Now this is assuming you already know how to work with these conditions. Um, so if you don't, make sure to check out our other training materials. Um, I've already got my documents uploaded that I'm going to be signing. So I'm gonna be using here my uh, client consent for credit, which I've created in the system. So all I need to do then is select the doc I want to be signed, select the, or rather the condition. So we'll check that off, check my condition, and maybe I'm gonna sign this one too, and this one too. So to check those, and then I need to also make sure to have this little guy checked. This little symbol means e-sign. So make sure to have that selected. Um, in two places, not only here, but also on next to the file name right within that condition. All right, um, this client consent for credit, I've got it checked here, but you notice this other document, it's not checked off on. Um, that means that this document will not be included in my signing package. So if I wanted it to be included, I'd have to just select this to turn that symbol blue. Um, on another note, it has to be a PDF. So this document is a PNG. Um, to change it over to PDF, all I have to do is just click this blue convert button and that will auto change it over. Okay, so I'm ready to send this for signing. I checked here, check the symbol and I check that the symbol is checked off there as well. And then I come up to our actions button, which if you know anything about how we work these conditions in Velocity, you'll be quite familiar with this button. So this little guy here, I click and then I go down to my eSign options and click to send selected the eSign document. All right, um, we have templated a lot of these documents, so the signatures will already be placed for you. But if you're using your own document, then of course the system hasn't templated it, so you'll have to just go ahead and place the signatures on your own. So um, this is first to say, who am I sending it to? This will pop up with all the borrowers um, in the in the borrower section, if you have their email in there, it'll auto generate. Also, I can add someone else if I have like a parent for a gift letter to sign, or you know, even I want to use eSign to sign these documents. I can add myself in, and I just click Add Client. Now, one thing to note about eSign is uh, you do need to think about purchasing transactions to use it. So, if you haven't done that yet, you'll want to do that. I'll show you how to do that quickly at the end. And the way that these transactions work um, in credits, so it's one credit per package you're sending. So ideally you're sending all the documents to be signed at once to everyone at the same time because then you're only using one credit to, to get signed. Otherwise, if you're gonna send them separately, that'll take separate credit. Okay, when I'm ready, I just hit submit. And this launches me to the designer page where I can drag and drop the signatures as required. So if I look down on here, as I mentioned, these disclosure forms already have the signature placed for you because um, it's templated in the system. So Kate's already got her signature there. Um, the same would be true for the sequential pages. But if I wanted to go and place a signature for someone else, say they weren't in the borrower section, I didn't have their email or anything in there, um, so I just added them on last minute to sign or it's a document that the system didn't create for you. So if it's your own kind of document, then you're gonna to have to place the signatures yourself. So to do that, just go and click 
on the name of the person that you want to place the signatures for over here and then you select signature and drag that on over Okay, you can resize it as you want. And then one important thing to remember here is it defaults to click to sign. Now, if you've ever used DocuSign, that's kind of like a stamp of their name. Um, but in order to be lender compliant, we're going to want to change that to capture signature, just as it says for this pre-placed one. So this click to sign, I'll just make sure that I've selected the signature, so it's outlined in black and then I'll click these three dots to make that change. So by clicking these dots, it comes up with my signature type telling me it is click to sign. Okay, I wanna change to capture signature. And again, that's where they can actually go and sign with their finger or their mouse. I can also duplicate this field if I want. So I can click these three dots and duplicate if I have any additional signatures that I wanna place and then I would just drag them to the appropriate spot. Okay, good. So I've got my capture signature. If I forget to do that, um, when I hit send, it'll warn me if any have not been changed. So don't worry too much about missing that. And now if I wanted to go place maybe a date or any other fields, you can see that they're grayed out. I can't do that yet. Um, what I need to do is just have the signature selected. So click again on the signature. Then now those are showing up for me. So now I can go and place my signing date. Put it where I need it. Um, I can also do date field. What's the difference? Signing date is going to auto generate the date that they sign and date field allows them to choose the date. Text field, if you want them to type something else in um, or, you know, on MPP form, you want them to wave yes or no, just put a text field over the options and they can go and type in the one that they want or if it's something um, mandatory that I don't want them to miss. Again, select the signature and then hit these three dots up here and they'll lead me to where I can actually input something that will show up in there. So if I want them to say write their email address, I type that in there and it shows up here. And I can make it required so that it's mandatory that I can't somehow miss that field. All right, then when I'm all finished, placing everything, make sure it's all good to go. And then all I have to do is hit send. And that will go through to my client and whoever else I have set on file to sign. Tells me that it's successfully been sent. And all you have to do now is sit back, relax and wait, wait for that email telling you that your documents have been signed. So you'll get a notification after each borrower is finished or each sorry, person on the signing package is finished, and then after the package is complete. So you'll be able to just go back to your conditions and documents and find those documents signed there for you. So you won't have to like go through save downloading or uploading them or anything. They'll just automatically be placed back in those conditions. So I could come back to the condition and take a look. It says um, for this one, eSign acquired, because I had done this one earlier and it even shows me who has signed and who hasn't signed. You'll also get an e-sign complete and an e-sign requested. So you get status updates right here. And when I click to open this, if I go and view, I got uh, my client consent here that it's been signed. Um, I can click view to take a look. There we go, perfect. Make sure that it has in fact been signed. Um, if it is missing a signature, you can click the fetch button and that kind of does a refresh to go out and collect any signatures that are waiting to be added. So that's what that button does. That's pretty much it. Yeah, very easy. Your documents come back all signed. Um, next question I know you will have is how do I purchase credits for this? Um, because as I mentioned earlier, you do need to purchase, think about purchasing for this. Um, it is a third party company that we use for this. So we do pay monthly subscription fees. So we need to charge a slight fee to use it. However, we price it very competitively. So to do that, you come to me and go to your settings page. It's the same page that you see when you log in, when you click to open Velocity. So you'll recognize it once we get there. And I scroll down to my purchase products. Now this shows me the total number of products I have 
use and, uh, and that I have left. So I can come and I click add, this green add button, if I want to add additional ones, and then it takes you to, as you can see, the screen that you see when you click to open Velocity when you log in. Um, but now you'll notice we have this eSign. So I click eSign and it gives me options. So it's purchased in, in packages. I can either do four transactions for $20, 60 for 180, or $300 for the year unlimited. Um, this is Canadian pricing and it's one year from the purchase date that it lasts. So there you go, all you'd have to do is go down and hit start and you'd be good to go. Um, enter your visa information and then once that's all finished, you can go back to your page and just click the yellow update button to see these totals added, your new transactions added to the total. Really easy to do. This is done broker by broker basis. Um, if you are an associate though, or you have an assistant, so your account must be set up in that role. But if it is, um, you can share credits with associates or assistants. And to do that, you just put their name in this drop down list. So you click the list and it'll come up with the options from your office and you would just have their name added in there. Um, in which case you can view the transaction history here to see where your credits have been used if you're just wanting to keep track of that.